Of course we had a tropical storm this past week. Of course we did. Of course it had a name, Etta. Of course it's the middle of November, and instead of looking at turkey decorations, we are looking at cones of uncertainty and feeling those rain bands. We had a tumultuous election this year that has not yet resulted in settled unity. We had protests this year that erupted out of centuries of injustice and discrimination and violent treatment of minorities by those in authority of the majority. And we had COVID-19. Does it seem like we've had COVID-19 forever instead of just nine months? Do you even remember March? Just this March, when everything changed. This March, it seemed to me that it was unbelievable that schools would close. Nothing but hurricanes, blizzards, bomb threats close schools. Schools do not close. Theme parks do not shut down. I didn't think it was possible. Then businesses began to close and only essential work continued. Back then, I admit to innocence and naivete, I thought it would be a short interruption. A couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. By this fall, we would be back to normal. But we are not back to normal, or near normal, in this longest year. I thought that coming back to worship at Park Lake would feel normal. It's good, and I'm thankful, but it's not how it was. I miss hugs. I miss how we wander all over the place in the passing of the peace and will us to start playing the organ to get us to sit down. And I miss singing. Don't you miss singing? This year, there's actually been a new phenomenon that has been identified that is called COVID dreams. Have any of you had any COVID dreams? There's actually been some studies that say that there's this kind of uh, very vivid, kind of strange dream where everything's all jumbled up and sometimes we're dreaming in metaphors that may have to do with social distancing or with financial worry. Sometimes in these dreams there are images of zombies or tsunamis or spiders. COVID dreams. According to Scientific American, of all places, this is the first time that a surge in dreams as a result of a global pandemic has actually been measured. In addition to COVID dreams, there's also the COVID-19. Has anyone gained that? <laughs> About midway through quarantine, for some reason we decided to weigh our dog. To my shock, I realized that I had been stress feeding the dog. <laughs> comfort food for me, comfort food for the dog. Treat for Linda, treat for Archie. Theologians and psychologists are just beginning to sift through how this year is impacting us. Not just in the United States, but across the world. How does lockdown impact women and children for whom home is not a haven, but a dangerous place? What about working parents who are now juggling virtual school and virtual work and real life stress with too few hours in the day? And for those already on the margins, COVID is one more push toward the brink of disaster. We know that opioid overdoses are increasing, including in our own community. Where would we be in this if not for our faith? 
if it weren't for old words, wise words, living words, how would we know that this too shall pass, that God is in this with us? Psalm 90 remembers how many years God's people saw evil. Yet the psalmist trusts that God can make glad just as many days as they have seen affliction. God has been home for us for generations. Before there were mountains or the earth or the world, there was God. Reading Paul's letter to the Thessalonian Christians, the majority of whom were Gentile converts, it sounds like he was intending to comfort them. But along the way, he describes some pretty stark images of what's ahead for them. He calls it the wrath to come. Some scholars think that Paul may have been referring to the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem uh, leveled by the Romans in 70 AD. It's probably more likely that Paul is talking about the second coming of Christ. The parousia, or presence, it's called. And it was promised by Jesus and much discussed among early Christians. When would it be that Jesus would come again? Surely it will be soon, right? But then some of the brothers and sisters begin to die. And the faith family is worried. They miss the return of Jesus. What will be their fate? Paul reassures them in chapter four, that they may be grieving, but they yet have hope. He writes, for since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. The Thessalonians can trust God with their loved ones. But when and how exactly the dead in Christ are raised, they must leave in God's hands. The apostle then turns to the living uh, Thessalonian Christians and says, you aren't going to know when Jesus is coming back again. You won't know. It will be sudden, like when labor suddenly begins or there's suddenly a break-in in your house by a thief. You won't have any advance notice. But Paul urges them not to worry. You, beloved, are children of the light and children of the day. Gird yourselves, toughen up with faith and love and salvation like a breastplate and a helmet, like armor. As children of the day, God has destined us for salvation, not for wrath. Whether awake or asleep, we will live with Christ who died for us. But we won't know when that day will be. As human beings, we don't know the times and the seasons. We don't know the times very clearly right now. Sometimes we don't even know what day it is. When all the days are the same, it could be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, I spent many weeks of the quarantine thinking Friday was Saturday and asking people how their weekend was going. (laughs) I came across an article recently from the journal Psychological Trauma. Now that I'm in counseling, I read things like that. I was caught by this article, article because of its title. The title is When Time Falls Apart. When Time Falls Apart the public health implications of distorted time perception in the age of COVID-19. Distorted time perception is like when it seems like time has slowed to a crawl, when two weeks seems like 10 years. 
It's true that time takes on a different feel, doesn't it? Depending on what we're doing or what we're waiting for or what we're looking forward to. Recently, a medical student told me uh, that he found that his second year, which is the hardest and most intense year in medical training, he found that the weeks were flying by. And suddenly it was November. But the days, the days, hours of studying and lectures, all virtual and more studying, all in the same room at the same desk, hours, sometimes 12 hours a day, the days seemed endless. It reminded me of the experience of new parents where days and nights of no sleep and exhaustion seem endless. But suddenly you turn around and your newborn is walking. And then you turn around again and they're driving. Is Christmas coming soon? Objectively, it's 40 days from today. Some of you may gasp and say, oh no, that's too soon, I will never be ready. But there are others who will say, I can't wait that long. And what will Christmas bring in this longest year? We don't know. We cannot know with any certainty. One of the ways that a trauma like a pandemic, affects us is that trauma can peel away the facade of the future. Suddenly it forces us to live in the present moment and not be exactly sure what the future will be like. The writers of the article about distorted time perception recognize this era of profound uncertainty and fear about the future. For many people, some among us, the future was something we just assumed. We just assumed we would work, we would retire, we would visit family, we would travel. For the young, the future seemed set. Go to school, take exams, make new friends, go on dates, have graduation, go to job interviews. Having a future orientation is essential for well-being and morale, the article says, especially for coping with adversity. It's particularly important for the young to have a hopeful, goal-oriented future orientation. The pandemic has called into question many of our expectations for the future, Will we be together again across generations before it's too late for some? Is this how life is going to be from now on? Or just until a vaccine? And then life will be the way it was before. Or will it be something different? Is this a, a wrinkle in the space-time continuum or a whole new world? One way one healthy and hopeful way that we can respond to this time of uncertainty is to take control. Take control of anything, no matter how small. Anything we can. Do what's possible and safe. We can rewrite our own personal story, our timeline, and fit the pandemic into it. What can we say about it? what it has changed, how it has changed us. Maybe we don't want to go back to how things used to be. Maybe we want to go forward and be different. How have we experienced God during COVID? Here at Park Lake, we have certainly learned that God is not locked down in this building. We have learned that, haven't we? Our faith community of Park Lake reaches beyond walls and beyond bricks and mortar, 
beyond Orlando and even beyond Central Florida. We are worshiping with others in our Christian family who are very far away from us physically, and that is joyful. We have learned how precious faces and smiles are, and handshakes and hugs. It's possible for us who have known the privilege of counting on things and feeling secure in what the next day would bring, that we can grow in compassion for those many in the world who never have that privilege. Most people in the world cannot count on things being secure from day to day and year to year. With our time distorted, our sleep disrupted, our financial security perhaps blown out the window, even the steadiness of school now strange on a screen, where shall we find our hope? Friends, let us draw deeply from our faith. Let us talk with one another and with our children and young people about how this, even this, is not bigger than God. This pandemic is not out of time and out of possibility that God is in it. God is moving and healing and bringing new life, even as we speak. We are children of the day and of the light. What chaos is around us and sneaks into our sleep is not mightier than the Lord of life, the God of love, whose beloved Son died for us and rose again so that we would be raised to new life and abundant life with him. A big huge change happened this year. But we are not alone in it. We are not lost. We are not floating in darkness and wandering without a map. We belong to God, who is for us refuge, dwelling place, home. Amen.